Ooh, couldn't all whites today, huh? Just one more, guys. Straight. All right, guys, ready to go? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Good at bats, make the plays, no errors, everybody talking. Yeah. Have fun, right? Just baseball. Let's go, break them down. Goes on three, one, two, three, go! He's got a great personality with young kids, and, and he's very knowledgeable. I'm always there for you, Dan. You should know that. When they find out exactly who he was and, and how good he was, they just, um, they really take to him. It was great hater. to pitch from Marson and home run for Ryan Westmoreland. He could have been like Ken Griffey. I know that's a pretty big name, but that's the type of talent. I had gone from being drafted out of high school to losing everything to slowly gaining it back to at the drop of a hat, losing absolutely everything again. Growing up in Portsmouth, Rhode Island, 50 miles south of Fenway Park, Ryan Westmoreland shined from the beginning. We had people over, and the highlight of the party was to go outside and watch Ryan hit. And this was at three or four years old. You know, we'd throw him wiffle balls in the backyard, and he's just hitting lasers. You ask your children, what do you want to be when you grow up, when you're five? And he says, Major League Baseball. Like a girl saying, I want to be a princess. Hi, my name is Ryan Westmoreland. I'll be playing shortstop, and my favorite player is Pedro Martinez. In the 2002 Little League World Series, when he was 12, Ryan led his team to the regional finals. In high school, he was twice named Rhode Island's Player of the Year. And at the 2008 Major League Baseball draft, at the age of 18, he got exactly what he'd been hoping for all his life. The fifth round selection, the Boston Red Sox select Ryan Westmoreland, a center fielder from Portsmouth High School in Portsmouth, Rhode Island. This is just overwhelming right now. Um, a lot of my friends are happy for me. I want to really thank the Red Sox. Our own evaluations of him at that time, where we saw him as an impact player in the big leagues a few years down the line. One scout dropped a Mickey Mantle on him after seeing one particularly good performance. The next year, at Single A Lowell, in his first season in Boston's farm system, Ryan finished among the league leaders in home runs and batting average. Go to pitch for Marson, and home run for Ryan Westmoreland, his second in two days, his fourth in a week. By spring training 2010, at the age of 19, Ryan was inching closer to Fenway Park. But that's when he first noticed that something wasn't feeling right. He told team medical personnel that there was persistent numbness and tingling on his right side. They immediately shut me down, sent me out for the MRI. We looked at the MRI, and there you could see a bright white ball. It looked like a golf ball. It was a tangle of blood vessels in his brain stem, a cavernous malformation. If they bleed, they can kill. His malformation had bled, but a doctor that he saw in New York five days after the MRI told him the symptoms should fade, that the malformation would probably never bleed again. Over the course of the night, I probably woke up four or five times saying my whole arm's completely numb. Then I woke up again saying my whole leg's completely numb. I lost, I'd say, 95% of my vision. My eyes were completely paralyzed to the right. I was completely deaf in my right ear. The malformation in Ryan's brainstem had bled again. We didn't understand it really completely at the time. We just knew that his life was in danger. And, um, sorry. I can't even, you know, put it into words. What I was feeling, you know, how it went from, I'm going to be able to play again to, I don't know if I'm going to live much longer. Red Sox owner John Henry arranged for Ryan and his family to fly on his private jet to Phoenix to meet with Robert Spetzler, this is the a world-renowned neurosurgeon. Right 
is the cavernous malformation. In his particular case, he had a fairly large hemorrhage, which is a bleed inside that brainstem. The surgery is a big deal. You're operating on the portion of the brain that is the most critical. The risks of surgery include death, coma, paralysis. Ryan, um, with a, just a stone face, just looked at him and said, I want to do the surgery. On March 16, 2010, Spetzler performed the six-hour procedure, the back of the which was videotaped. And we are approaching the cavernous malformation. Here is the cavernous malformation being removed. Cavity is inspected, and we are finished. The doctor came out. And he came into the waiting room, into a private room, and, and said it couldn't have gone better. We run down the hall, and he's just surrounded by machines and wires and, you know, but of course he was, you know, he's awake and looking at us. The muscles on one half of Ryan's face were frozen. His fingers numb. His fine motor skills and eyesight severely diminished. Yet a day after surgery, he took his first steps. Three weeks later, on opening night, the Red Sox invited Ryan to Fenway Park as an honored guest. There's a special commitment that we make when, when we sign an 18-year-old kid out of high school. Instead of going to college, he comes to us. It's our responsibility to take great care of him, especially at times of need. As the season got underway, Ryan went to Spalding Rehabilitation Hospital in Boston, where he spent much of the next four months, and where eventually some familiar traits reappeared. All right. Rocky. In August 2010, for the first time after his surgery five months earlier, Ryan faced live pitches. I had tears in my eyes watching it because it was him. You know, it was the same swing. Uh, I was nervous. I felt like the ball was coming about 98 miles an hour, but, um, you know, I was, I was pleasantly surprised with how I adjusted to it. But later that month, when he trained with his teammates in Lowell, Ryan struggled. Oh, heads up. Oh, God. Over the fall and winter, he continued to rehabilitate, working daily on his balance and fine motor skills. <laughs> Even as his strength and eyesight improved, that you simple you tasks were not that simple. Deep down, um, you think you're going to play baseball again? Absolutely. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll say that until somebody tells me, looks me in the eyes, and say, Ryan, you're not going to ever play again. Huh? On March 16, 2011, one year to the day after his surgery, Ryan was back at spring training. This is really good wood on this. And at the plate, taking batting practice, he was in many ways the old Ryan Westmoreland. Though he never saw game action that season, he went back to spring training in 2012, hopeful that his dreams of playing at Fenway Park might still be realized. When we last spoke, you were still hopeful that you would be able to reach the major leagues. What happened after, after you started that comeback? I started the comeback, um, and th things were going great. I mean, it was slow, but it was a, a steady progression. Right when I felt like that was, that I was on the cusp of doing that, I got a call um, saying, you have to go to Arizona for another brain surgery. During a routine scan, Ryan's doctors again discovered a cavernous malformation on his brainstem. This time, they caught it before it bled, but the malformation would need to be removed immediately. 
When I got that call, I was devastated because the first time I could tell something was going on. Um, and this time I had no idea. I remember I was, I was crying my eyes out. On July 13, 2012, for the second time, Ryan underwent surgery to remove a cavernous malformation from his brainstem. And for the second time, Ryan woke up when the procedure was over. But it left him with double vision and almost no feeling on the right side of his body. It quickly became clear his baseball career was over. I know how passionate he was about the game. Um, it, it, it hurt us so much to watch it being taken away from him so quickly and so unfairly. I, I just, it was, very, it was a very tough time, very dark. Where did your thoughts take you? Suicide, um, it, it was just depression. I didn't feel like moving off the couch. Um, I, di I didn't want to see my friends. I really didn't want to see my family. I, I would talk to people, but you know, it was, it was always just I, like they were talking to a brick wall. I didn't think I was really there for a while. With the help of a therapist, Ryan learned to cope with his depression. Ready, set, hut, so break him down. Goes on three, one, two, three, goes. And since 2015, Job. baseball has again become 19. part of oh. Ryan's life. 19. He's now a coach nope. with a travel team in Rhode Island. I can see a picture that you haven't seen that you can't handle. Right. He just has a genuine love for the sport, and I think being able to coach has given him a way to still be connected with it. Take a rest, guys. Get loose. We got like 10 minutes till game time. Take some dry swings. It's very satisfying uh, to see these young kids develop and through, and to be able to still pass on knowledge to younger kids and help them out is uh, really rewarding. All right, you got to be ready. He might call that a strike. Good. He's got a lot of knowledge. You know, he may have some physical disabilities from the surgeries, the knowledge of the mechanics of the swing. You know, the way kids look up to him is, is really something special. You don't even really have to crush these as long as your hips are really. Woo! He's just so genuinely himself. He doesn't try to live up to an expectation of who he used to be or who he was supposed to be. He has just kind of had to re-learn who his new identity is. Part of that new identity is working as an ambassador for a nonprofit called the Angioma Alliance. For the last three years, Ryan has been sharing his story in the hopes of helping others. I'm a trainer, I'm a coach, I coach baseball. Um, and for the first time in a while, I'm truly happy. I really am. Tonight is Cavernous Angioma Awareness Night. Please give a warm welcome home to Fenway Park to a most talented player and a most respected coach, our dear friend, Ryan Westmoreland. Um, it was really special because for 20 odd years of my life, I said that was the dream to be in the park um, with a full crowd around me. And it was certainly a different circumstance um, but I was so honored to even have the opportunity to do that. Most of the time, Ryan's focus is on his present and his future. And the Red Sox break a record set 106 years ago with their 106 victory. But as friends from the minor leagues have become stars, it can be hard for him not to dwell on the past. I was excited for those guys that I had personal relationships with, um, but I would be lying if I say a part of me didn't say, I wish that was me. Judge back, got some carry, and this ball's gonna bounce out! It's a home run for Vasquez! I'll start, start in the big leagues. I know if he's, you know, he's playing now, he's gonna be one of the stars, like Mookie, he could have been like Ken Griffey. I know it's a pretty big name, but 
that's the type of talent. Every night, he probably remembers of what if or what, what could it have been. I know how good I was. I know where I was going. Ryan Westmoreland, a center fielder from Portsmouth High School. Go to pitch for Marson and home run for Ryan Westmoreland. What might have been, does it still bring sadness? Every day of my life until, you know, you ask me the same question 60 years from now, and every day I'll think about what it might have been. I'm not going to be Mike Trout. I'm not going to be Mickey Mantle. Um, but, you know, I, I have a lot to live for.